Hey y'all, so today I'm going to be telling you about the best job that I've ever had as a software engineer. And I'll be sharing with you the things that made that job such an amazing experience for me. And also just giving you the tips on what to keep an eye out for when it comes to your job search process so that you can land a great job as well. My name is TJ and I'm a self-taught software engineer that shares coding tips and tutorials to help beginners on their coding journey and to just help people navigate the tech world in general. So if you haven't already, help support my channel by subscribing, liking this video, and commenting something positive down below because all of that helps my channel to continue growing. Now, most of my experience as a software engineer has been working at small startups with an engineering team of about three to five people max. So the place where I had my best experience as a software engineer was a small startup that had an engineering team of four people when I started. And that four people included the engineering manager. So there were only three software engineers on the team. So that means that when I joined, I became the fourth software engineer. And that was actually my first time working on an actual engineering team. Because before that, I was the only software engineer at my last job, which was actually my first job. So um, I'm actually going to post a video about that experience a bit later on. Before that, I was the only software engineer at my previous job. And that leads into the first reason why I really enjoy my time here. So I was on an engineering team that fostered growth and learning. The team had engineers with different levels of experience. And our engineering manager was a startup guy himself that really enjoyed helping other engineers grow. When you're looking for a job, it's really important you get a good understanding of the team dynamic an insight into your manager's management style and make sure that it meshes with what you're looking for. If your manager is one that likes to get into the code, make sure you dig into that a bit more, right? Like, does that mean they still take on tickets and write code at work? Or do they just write code on their free time, which is a lot better? From my experience, which is limited, so definitely take this with a grain of salt, but the manager that I had that liked to get into the code that meant he just did the work himself and didn't really foster an environment of growth and learning for the other engineers. Learning and growing is very important for me in my career. So finding an engineering team where the manager focused on putting people first and actually managing us, helping us learn and grow by providing opportunities to work on different projects and just putting us in situations where we can be successful that has always been the best experience for me. Managers already have a lot on their plate. So when you find a manager that's still trying to take on tickets and write code on a job, sometimes they end up being a bottleneck to the growth of the engineering team. And that causes more problems than it solves. So some questions you can ask during the interview process are, how do you develop talent and make sure the engineers on the team are growing to their full potential? Uh, another question is, how big are the engineering teams and how do you determine who gets put on what team? And lastly, how involved are you in the development process? Like, do you still write code on the job? You know, because finding a manager that actually loves working with people is key. Like a lot of engineering managers get to that level just because it's the next step for them and not necessarily because they have a passion for other people. And that's the key. You want to work with a manager that actually enjoys working with people and takes pride in helping them grow. Now, before I get into my tech experience, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor. Here's a quick word from our sponsor, Brilliant, an online learning platform whose approach to learning is built around exploration, interactive learning, and a deep understanding of core concepts. I like the Brilliant platform because they use the same interactive problem solving approach that I use with my own students. And that hands-on approach will help you to build strong problem-solving skills as you work on real-world problems. They have multiple courses relevant to your coding journey, such as data structures, algorithms, computer science fundamentals, and so much more. They have over 60-plus courses to choose from, so there's something for everyone. Click the link below to sign up and get started learning today for free. And the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So check the description for more information. Moving on, the next reason why I really enjoyed my time at this company was that because it was a small startup with a consumer product, I got to take on a lot of big projects and do impactful work. 
And by impactful, it was really easy for me to see the impact of the work I was doing because as soon as we released my work, uh, people were using it, right? Like marketing would come back a few weeks later to give us status updates on how the business was doing. And you could see how the different features we released impacted our bottom line. When you're working on a consumer product, the sales timeline is a lot shorter because users can just go to the website and purchase the product right from there. And that's a lot different when you compare it to an enterprise product where you're selling to other companies because bigger companies have yearly budgets and long sales timelines where before they buy a new product, it has to go through some kind of approval process and just all this red tape. And sometimes they might even like your product, but they're out of budget or they just signed up with someone else. So that means they have to wait for the contract to expire before they can purchase your product. Now, none of that is your concern as an engineer, <laughs> but for me, it was really cool to see the code I wrote being used immediately by people and just feeling like I was building features that directly help the business make more money. So those are some of the things to consider when trying to decide between working at a smaller startup versus working at a larger company. And also consider the type of products those companies work on. Like, is it a consumer-based product where they're selling to everyday people like you and me? Or is it a B2B product where they're selling to other businesses? When you're selling to consumers, the pace of development moves a lot faster, especially since the feedback loop is faster as well, right? Because if you push something that consumers don't like, you know immediately because they'll start complaining and blowing up the support line. So this can be a pro or a con, <laughs> whereas with enterprises, it might be a while before someone even starts using the product, which means it'll be a while before you get any kind of feedback. So make sure to research the companies you're interviewing with and get a good understanding of the product they're selling and to who they're selling to. Now, the third reason I really enjoy my time at this company doesn't have much to do with the company itself, but the city it was in. I was working in Austin, Texas, and at the time, Austin was still a growing tech startup city, but uh, it's definitely changed a lot now since a lot of the large tech companies from Silicon Valley have moved to Austin. But at the time I was working there, Austin wasn't as saturated with large tech companies, and it was a growing startup tech city, and our office was right downtown. So that means we got to try out a lot of different cool places to eat during lunch, and anytime I needed a break from work, I could just go for a quick walk downtown or just go hang out at the park for a bit. And I really enjoyed my time in Austin. And it made me realize how much I love that small, big city feel, you know. And being in a tech city created a lot of networking opportunities as there was always some tech happy hour going on or just some tech event constantly happening. Half the time I would leave work, I would head to some kind of tech event or some tech happy hour. And that provided lots of opportunities to network and meet people in other industries and other companies. Now, I know the pandemic has changed things to where a lot of people are now working remotely. But the main point that I'm trying to make with this third reason of why I enjoy my job is that your work-life balance is really important. And that work-life balance first starts with the culture at the company you're working at in terms of the kind of hours you're going to be working which then extends into how you're able to spend your time after work and sometimes even during work. So some important questions to ask during the interview process to help you better understand the work-life balance of the company are, are one, what is the typical work schedule and work-life balance like at this company? And two, is there a call schedule? Like, are you guys ever on call? And three, do you enjoy working here? If so, why? <laughs> if not, <laughs> why not, right? And that last question is really telling. So make sure you pay attention to the body language and posture of the person answering that question and trust your gut with their answer. And that's it. Uh, hopefully this video helped you to learn a lot more about what to look for when job searching so that you can find a job that's going to help you grow into your best self and foster a safe and balanced learning environment. Now, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel to hear more content like this and comment down below to let me know what you thought and also like this video to help my channel continue growing.